To find the written version of this pattern and instructions for how to make a chocolate covered strawberry, check out the link in the description below, on screen now, or by going to clubcrochet.com slash berry. Hey there, it's Louie, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to crochet a giant strawberry. We're also going to be learning how to make a chocolate covered version as well. Now this pattern is not originally designed by myself. It's actually designed by another amigurumi artist that goes by Druby Zoo. You might know him from TikTok or Instagram, uh, he, but he's recently beginning really into amigurumi art. And as you can tell, he's very talented at it. Um, if you wanna check out more of his work, check out the links in the description down below. Uh, and uh, yeah, my favorite one that he's come out with recently is the narwhal. He's got a really cute narwhal amigurumi piece. But this pattern was originally designed by him. Uh, I reached out to see if he wanted to do a collaboration pattern and here we are. So in this video, I'm going to be going as slow as possible to make it as beginner friendly as possible. So if you are a complete beginner, this pattern should work out for you. Um, I'm because I'm going to go through all the different techniques for each of the stitches. Um, I'm also going to use the time codes down below so you can quickly jump to different parts of this pattern. And uh, if you have any questions, make sure to uh, let me know in the comments or check out our, our Discord or Facebook group where you can go to get some extra help as well. Um, okay, well, without further ado, let's get hooking and talk about all the materials that you need for this pattern. For this pattern, I'm using the following materials. I'm using all worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton because I just really like the way it looks for this pattern. I like that it doesn't add any fuzzy to it, um, which is something that I think is probably pretty good for a strawberry look. You'll need the following materials, or the following colors. Um, I, the main color you're gonna need is red. Now in this video, I am gonna be making a regular strawberry and then cutting away briefly to show you how to make this chocolate covered uh, strawberry version. So the main color I'm gonna be using in this video is red, but if you're gonna add chocolate, you're obviously gonna want some brown color as well. You'll also need yellow, and that's gonna be for all of these little seeds. You'll need black, that's gonna be for adding the face. Um, we're gonna be doing a little smile and maybe some eyelashes in this video. You also need some pink for the cheeks. That is actually Druby Zoo's signature look. And then you'll need some green for the top for this little leafy part, which is called the calyx, if you didn't know. That's what it's called in the strawberry, uh, on a strawberry, the top leafy part is called the calyx. I learned that from Juby Zoo in this pattern. Uh, okay, what else will you need? Um, okay, so we're all using worsted weight yarn. Because I'm using worsted weight yarn, I'm using a size G four millimeter crochet hook. You also need a darning needle. I really like using these crimped end darning needles like this. It helps me get in and out of uh, hard to reach stitches, which is gonna be pretty important, especially when we're adding all these seeds because they're all gonna be embroidered on. You'll need a pair of scissors, of course, and then some darning need or some safety eyes. I'm using a size 10 millimeter safety eyes for this pattern. If you want to get a kit with all the materials that you need, um, you should be able to find links to kits down in the description below. It comes with all the materials that I'm using in this actual video. So it's the exact same materials I'm using, uh, and you can choose between a chocolate covered or a regular strawberry as well. Okay, well, let's get rocking and rolling and get started. We're going to start by actually making the strawberry itself, and then we're going to be adding the face and stuff and making this calyx leafy part on the top as well. Okay, well, let's get started. We're gonna start by using red for the body here. Okay, so the majority of this pattern is pretty simple. Um, it's pretty basic as far as amigurumi patterns go. Uh, so we're just gonna be going through all the different little uh, techniques that you'll need to learn how to crochet in general, which is why I'm gonna be taking it pretty slow in the beginning for beginners. Um, if you're a little frustrated with my speed, um, you can always use the written instructions down in the description or skip ahead. Uh, I'll be adding little parts, uh, little time codes so that you can quickly jump to different parts of the video that you want. Um, oh, also, if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe down below. It helps support this channel uh, and you can also help support with kits, purchases and stuff like that. Okay, so we're going to start with a magic loop method. The magic loop method is definitely the easiest way to start crocheting and I'm just going to show you the easiest way to do it. I do have a full video tutorial that teaches you some other ways to do it and an, a little bit slower. I'll put links right here and then in the description for that as well, as well as any other kind of stitches that we're going to use. For the magic loop, we're gonna start with our red yarn here. We want it facing the ground, this tail end facing the ground, and pinch it with your 
middle and thumb finger at the same time, just like that. Then we're going to go around your index finger and middle finger simultaneously. Ooh, let's get a better grip there, like so. And then back around your middle finger. And then you want to make an X on the front and two parallel lines on the back, just like that. See how we got little X there, two parallel lines on the back. Take this tail end and the end attached to the ball and place them in between your ring and pinky finger, like so, and then close those in to keep them uh, tightened and in place. Let's go ahead and make sure that X is a little bit more X-y. There we go. Now you want to face uh, your fingers back towards you so you have those two parallel lines facing you. Take your crochet hook and go under just the first bar right here, just under the first one, and then you want to hook onto that second bar. Pull that second bar under the first one, like so, and then twist it like this to create a little loop. See how we got a little loop there? Then we want to go over that first bar and then yarn over with this end that's going under the first bar. The easiest way to do that is kind of help guide it over with your index finger to help get it onto the hook. Once it's onto the hook like that, you just want to pull it through this loop. The easiest way to do that is really scoop it in. And that's going to be the case with most of your pull throughs. If you're doing like single crochets, you really want to try to scoop it in. So I just kind of go like that and I scoop it like that and I'll pull it through that loop. That's going to create what we call a chain stitch. And now it should be locked into place and you can pull it off of your fingers just like that. Okay. So now we have this magic loop here. When we pull this tail end, it'll close that loop up. And we're going to work our first round of stitches right into the center of this magic loop so that you can keep track of where uh, all the stitches are. Okay, so we're going to do all of our stitches in this first uh, into this magic loop and we're going to start with round one. For round one, we're going to do six single crochets into the magic loop. So here is how to do a single crochet. The majority of this pattern is going to be made with single crochets. So you're going to want to really understand how to do this stitch. You're going to take your crochet hook go into the center of this hole right here, yarn over with the end attached to the ball of yarn. Here you can see with my non-dominant hand, I'm holding it tightly and I'm using my index fingers to pinch the hole. And I'm going to yarn over with the end attached to the ball and pull through the hole like that to create two loops on my crochet hook. Then going over this strand, I'm going to loop onto the yarn again and I'm going to pull that loop through the two loops on the hook simultaneously. Again, we're going to use a scooping kind of method like that to get through that. And that's going to be the single crochet. Pretty much this entire pattern is going to be made with that stitch. Um, although we're going to be switching it up every now and then to do things like the leaf. Okay, so we want to do six of those into this magic loop. Six of them. So there's our first one. Let's go into the loop again. Yarn over. Pull it through. Yarn over going over the loop and pull through the two loops on the hook like that. There's going to be our second single crochet. Let's do a third into the loop, yarn over and pull through, going over, yarn over and pull through two. And there's one, two, three. Let's go into the loop, yarn over and pull through, going over the loop, yarn over and pull through two. There's four. You can tell, you can count your stitches by looking at these V's along the edge here. One, two, three, four. Let's do fifth into the loop, pull through, over the loop, yarn over and pull through two. There is our fifth one, one, two, three, four, five. And then one more into the loop, yarn over and pull through. And then over the loop, yarn over and pull through. That's going to be our sixth single crochet and the end of round one. Now we can pull this tail end here and it should tighten your hole up just like that. Now before I get going too much um, and before that hole gets too tightened, we want to add a little bit of yarn just so we can keep track of where the end of the round is. You can use any color yarn for this. I'm going to be using yellow just because I have it currently and it'll be easy to see where the ends of the round is. You don't need very much of it. I'm just going to use a little bit like that. And what we're going to do, I'm going to pull this loop out and get my crochet hook free, go through the center like that. We're going to take this yellow yarn. I'm just going to pull it straight through the center like so until just a little bit is left over. And then I'm going to take this tail end, place it over, take this end, get it off to the side so that all that's here. Actually, we can take both these red ends, get them off to the side so that it's got this open space here. 
and then we're going to take this tail end and fold it over like so and that way while we go we're going to keep doing that at the end of each round to know where the end of the round is okay take our crochet hook get it back into that stitch we can pull this loop tighter around the crochet hook and then we can pull this other tail end let's hold this yellow end with our dominant hand over to the side and we're going to take this other tail end and pull really tight so that it tightens the hole a little bit more now for our first stitches i am going to try to work around this tail end just to keep it locked into place just for a few stitches um, although you can just hide it a little later if you want to okay so for round two of your piece we're going to be doing an increase into each stitch around so we're going to work into the single crochets that we did in round one but we're going to put two single crochets into each one of these stitches that's what an increase stitch is now this pattern has worked in the round meaning that we're going to keep going around in a spiral we never want to turn around we're just going to keep going around in a spiral until it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger bigger okay so we're going to go into this first stitch that you made now it can be kind of hard to find your first stitch if you have a hard time finding it count backwards from where the loop is coming out and count six so there's one two three four five and six so this is going to be our first stitch right there and we want to get our crochet hook under both of these loops now later on if you're making the chocolate covered strawberry we're going to be going under only one of these two loops but for the majority of this pattern you want to make sure that the crochet hook is under both of those loops simultaneously okay get our needle free get our crochet hook we're going to go under both of those loops like that and then we're going to take this actually first take your tail end we're going to place it over your crochet hook like that and then we're going to take our end attached to the ball we're going to loop it over the hook and then pull it th under these two loops that your hook is in right now just like this we're going to do that scooping method and then we're going to go over yarn over again and pull through the two loops on the hook to make a single crochet okay so that's our first single crochet um, for round two now like I said we're doing an increase into each stitch around which means we want to do two single crochets into the exact same spot that's what an increase means so we're going to do our first our second single crochet aka the end of our first increase into the same stitch where that first one was made so we're going to take your crochet hook look at where that v is pointing in right there take your crochet hook and put it straight into that spot like that and then yarn over pull it through yarn over again and pull through the two to make our second single crochet and see how these both these v's are kind of jammed into the same hole there you go that's going to be our first increase so we want to do an increase into each stitch all the way around until we get back around that's going to be uh, six increases total which is going to be 12 single crochets total so let's do into our next stitch the next stitch over is this one right here you can see the next v we're going to go right into that one right there yarn over with the end attached to the ball pull it under both of those loops going over yarn over and pull through the two loops on the hook like that there's our second single crochet now we're going to do another single crochet into that same spot so see where that v is going we're going to go into the same exact spot yarn over and pull through and going over it yarn over and pull through two for our second increase so there's one increase two increases aka four stitches so there's one two three four okay let's just keep doing that around now that we've worked a few we can actually hide that tail end we can just hold it off to the side we don't need it at all eventually we're going to cut it close now here is our third stitch right here we're going to go into that third stitch yarn over and pull through going over yarn over and pull through two there's our third uh, start of our third increase and then we're going to go into the same stitch yarn over and pull through and then yarn over and pull through two that's the end of our third increase and our sixth stitch we want 12 stitches total so it's going to be our next stitch right here next increase pull through going over yarn over and pull through two and then into the same stitch for our fourth increase pull through let's get a little bit more yarn and going over yarn over and pull through two okay next stitch right here yarn over and pull through going over it yarn over and pull through two 
then going into the same stitch, yarn over and pull through, over it, yarn over and pull through two. And then this right here is gonna be our last stitch. We've just finished our 10th stitch, which means we only have two more, which is our last increase right here. So we're gonna go into this stitch, yarn over, pull through, going over it, yarn over and pull through two, and then into the same spot right here, pull through, over it, yarn over and pull through two. That's gonna be our last stitch for round two. Let's just pull our stitch marker up. Just gonna fold it over like that. And then we're gonna work around this for the next round. Before I get going, let's go ahead and cut this tail end here so that it's just not in our way, just like that. Cut it nice and close. We're gonna save these little ends to stuff it into our piece a little later so we don't have too much waste. And then I'm just gonna pull this tail end a little bit more so that it's just barely poking through so it doesn't get in our way. And again, we're gonna fold the stitch marker up and work around it for our next round. Speaking of our next round, we are on our next round now. We're on round three. For round three, we're gonna do one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochets into the next stitch. So we're gonna do a single crochet and then an increase. And then we're gonna repeat that process six times total to go all the way around our piece and increase up from 12 stitches to 18 stitches. So let's do our first repeat. We're gonna go into the next stitch right here and do our first single crochet into that next stitch, working over our stitch marker. So there is our first stitch, which is just one single crochet. And then into the next stitch right here, we're gonna do two single crochets or an increase. So we're gonna increase in this next stitch right here. We're gonna do one single crochet and then another one into the same space. There you go. Okay, so that's gonna be our first repeat. We're gonna do one single crochet and then two single crochets. So one single crochet and an increase. And we're gonna repeat that process six times total. So that was our first repeat. Let's do our second repeat right here. One single crochet and then an increase into the next stitch. There's one and two into the same stitch. That's gonna be the, uh, our second repeat. Now our third repeat, single crochet one, and then increase one, meaning two in the same spot. One and two. Okay, you can tell that you uh, are, the difference between an increase and a single crochet here, if you look very closely, you'll see you have one V right here going into one stitch, and then two going into the next stitch. Now, if you become more attuned to crocheting, the, noticing the difference between an increase and a single crochet is really going to be nice because you're going to be able to count your stitches a lot easier. But for now, if you're a beginner, don't worry about that too much. Just worry about counting your stitches at the end of the round by looking at the Vs along the edge. Okay, so let's keep doing our repeats. We have a few more. Single crochet one into the next stitch. And then increase into the stitch after right here one and two let's keep going next stitch right here is our first single crochet and then our increase after that which is two single crochets one and two and that's the that's our fifth repeat we got one more repeat here i can tell because we're at the end of the round here's our stitch marker we're going to do single crochet into the next one right here and then our increase right here one and two. So now you should have 18 stitches around um, after, at the end of this round. And you're, you can count them again by starting at this stitch marker, looking for this little V here. You can see it more like a V looking that way and just counting each of those. So there's, let's just count them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna go under it to hold in place. And then eight, nine, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So this is our last stitch. And then the loop that's a currently around our crochet hook, we don't count in that. So we have 18 stitches around, which is exactly what we want. And now we can move on to round four. For round four, we're gonna continue this kind of repeat and you're gonna start to see a pattern starting to emerge. 
we're going to do two single crochets and then an increase, which means two in the same spot. So one single crochet, one single crochet, and then two in the lap, into that one. And then we're going to repeat that process six times total all the way around. So let's do our first repeat. Single crochet two. So let's start with our first stitch. There's one single crochet. And then one more single crochet into the next stitch right here. There is our second single crochet. And then an increase into our third stitch right here, meaning two in the same spot. So there's one and two into the same spot. So one, two, and then two in the same. And then we're gonna repeat that process six times in a row. So let's do our second repeat. That was the end of our first repeat. So here's our second one. Two single crochets, one, two, and then our increase right here. Three and four into the same stitch. Let's do our third repeat. One, two, and then our increase, three and four. We'll keep doing that around. Here's our fourth repeat, one, two, and then three and four are in the same stitch. And if you keep this count up, you should bring you up from 18 stitches to 24 stitches. So it's gonna be one, two, and then our last, or our increase, three and four. Let's get a little bit more yarn. And then our last repeat, two single crochets, one, two, and then three and four. Okay. At this part in the pattern, um, that's the end of our round, by the way. At this part of the pattern, it's probably really good to know what the front and the back look like. Um, sometimes I see beginners, uh, crocheting their whole piece and then actually using the wrong side to have on the outside. So this would be the right side of the piece. This is what you want your piece to look like um, on the front, so on the outside. This is the wrong side of your piece. You can tell, see all these lines, see all these little loops around the side? If we did it the wrong way around, it would look like this all the way throughout the entire piece. But really, it looks a lot better if it's this part. At least that's my opinion. Um, so that's the difference between the wrong side and right side. It might be really good to know uh, for your crochet because uh, it'll just make your piece look a lot better if these look on the outside. At least that's, again, my opinion. All right, so now we're on to round five. And round five, we're going to be switching it up a little bit. The, instead of doing two and then an increase, instead of like doing six repeats around, we're actually only going to do... Uh, two repeats throughout this entire round into round five here because we want to increase it a little bit slower so our repeat is going to be 11 single crochets and then an increase and then we're going to repeat that again so two times so just two times 11 single crochets and then an increase two in the same stitch and then repeat it twice so let's get our stitch marker up and get started 11 single crochets, so we're just going to go one into each stitch. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, and then our increase. So two in the same stitch after that. So there's one and two into the same stitch. Now let's go ahead and look at it again because if you're a beginner, it might be hard to tell that you did all single crochets and then an increase. But I'm gonna be able to show you how, how to tell the difference. So look at these Vs right here. See that? That's gonna be one single crochet. So we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And then this one here is an increase. And you can see that there are two of these Vs, one and two going into one space. Okay, so that's our increase. So let's repeat that process one more time, 11 single crochets and then an increase at the end of this round. And this is gonna bring you up from, uh, from 24 stitches to 26 stitches because we're only adding two increases. And each increase only adds one stitch to the round. So by adding two increases, we're adding only two stitches to the stitch count 
which makes us go from 24 to 26. Okay, so just a few more. Nine, there's 10 and 11, and then an increase after that right here. It's gonna be 12 and 13. And 13 times two is 26, which is exactly what we want on our stitch count. And that's gonna be the end of round five. For round six, we're gonna repeat this process, but add one more single crochet between increases. So instead of doing 11 and then an increase, in round six, which we're on right now, we're gonna do 12 single crochets and then an increase after that, and repeat that process um, twice. Two times total, I should say, not repeating it twice. So that's 12 single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve single crochets, and then our increase. And if you look, our increase here is going to go exactly where our increase was from the last round. See how you have those two into the same stitch? That's going to count all the way up. So it's actually going to be a really good way that you can see where increases go, especially if you're um, a little bit more used to crocheting. That is exactly how uh, to tell where your stitch count is without using a stitch marker like this. Although this is pretty easy. Okay, so now we want... 12 more single crochets and then an increase for our second repeat. We did our first repeat, 12 single crochets and then an increase. Let's repeat it one more time. 12 single crochets. There's one, two, I'll go kind of quick here. Three, four, five, six, seven. Let's get a little bit more yarn. Eight. 9, 10, 11, and here is our 12th single crochet, and then an increase into the last one right here. There's 13 and 14. So your stitch count at the end of round 6 here should be 28 stitches total. You can see how it's starting to grow. This is going to be the tip of our strawberry. Okay, so now we're on to round 7. And round seven is a nice little break. We're gonna start by pulling up our stitch marker so we can keep track of the end of our rounds. And for round seven, we're going to do a single crochet into each stitch around. So just one single crochet all the way around into every stitch around. So let's just keep starting our single crochets and you're just gonna do one into every stitch. Um, this is a good chance for you to count your stitches if you'd like to. There should be 28 stitches at the end of this round. And this is also a good chance that if you haven't yet, please like this video down below, subscribe to the channel, and if you finish up this strawberry, make sure to share it with me and Drew. Um, you can find our social profiles uh, in the description, but Drew is, uh, his Instagram and TikTok are both, are both at Drew B Zoo, D-R-E-W-B-I-E-Z-O-O, oh, Drew, D R. I-E-S-Z-O-O. -O. I'll put it on the screen right now so I don't mess it up too bad. And then Club Crochet's handle is just at club.crochet on Instagram and at Club Crochet on TikTok. Make sure to tag, a, tag us if you uh, make a post. We would absolutely love to see it. I don't know about Drew, but personally, every time I see someone that finishes up one of my patterns, it means so much to me. It is so cool. So go ahead and give Drew a little bit of love and post a... Uh, Something with your finished strawberry there. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of our round. We can pull this stitch marker up now. That's the end of round seven. Now we're on to round uh, eight. For round eight, we're gonna do 13 single crochets and then an increase and then repeat that twice. So we're doing what we did in round six, which was the round before our last round where we just did single crochets in each stitch. Um, we're doing basically that round, but we're adding another single crochet between increases to make it just a little bit bigger. We're increasing now very slowly to have like a slow increase up, and then we're going to pull it back in at the end by doing decreases, which I'll teach you then. So we want 13 single crochets. 
one, two, three, and you're gonna know that you're at the first increase by looking down a few rounds and seeing the last increase. And I'll show you that in just a second when we get to this, to our first increase here. Okay, I believe 12, I think this is gonna be 13. And then we want our increase. And like I said, if you look down, so if you looked at this stitch right here, that's just a regular single crochet. And that's because our last round was all single crochets. But if you look down around under that right here, you'll see two in the same stitch. That's because that's where the increase was in the round prior to the one before. So this is gonna be round six. So round eight, which we're on right now, our increase is gonna line up perfectly with that last increase. So it's gonna go right here. That's just how I um, crochet without using stitch markers. It's just a really good thing to know. And there is our first increase for uh, round eight here. Let's keep going around. We want 13 single crochets and then our second increase because we're doing that same repeat twice. And this should bring you up from uh, 28 stitches to 30 stitches. So by the end of this round, we should have 30 stitches around. Okay, almost there. There we go. 12, this is gonna be our 13th single crochet, and then an increase to be 14 and 15, and then 15 times two, that's gonna be 30 stitches around. So we're gonna take our stitch marker, pull it up like that, and that'll be the end of round eight. So now we're on to round nine, and round nine is another easy round. Um, for round nine, we're just gonna do a single crochet into every stitch around, so nice and easy. Just one single crochet in each stitch around. Another good chance for you to count your stitches, um, because in round uh, nine now, we should have 30 stitches around. So by the end of this round, you should be at 30 stitches. It's always nice to have a little break in between increases of just doing rounds of single crochet because they can kind of be somewhat mindless, especially if you're more, um, if you're used to crocheting because all you have to do is just make sure there's only one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Obviously this gets easier and easier as you get going too because uh, yeah, it just gets easier to crochet. Everything you crochet makes it a little easier. I've been crocheting now for about whew, 15 years. So at this point, especially with amigurumi, it's very easy for me to uh, crochet all the way around without, <laughs> without having to think about it much at all. Okay, and this is gonna be the end of our round. That's our 30th single crochet. Pull our stitch marker up. And now we are on to round uh, 10. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and mark it off on our PDF. Um, if you want to check out our PDFs and uh, the written instructions by going to clubcrochet.com slash Barry, I, keep, uh, I make it so that there's check marks for each round so that you can keep track of your rounds without having to like mess up and like go, oh shoot, which round am I on? I should count. Um, the check marks make it a lot easier. So go ahead and check out our patterns online. Uh, all of our patterns have this and each one of our patterns also have a full video tutorial just like this one. So I just try to put in a little bit more effort uh, for, the, for the written instructions so that you don't miss any stitches. Okay, so now I'm on to round 10. For round 10, we're going to be doing a, a different repeat here. Instead of doing a lot of single crochets and then an increase only two times, we're gonna do six repeats which is kind of repeating where we were at the beginning. So for round 10, we're going to do four single crochets and then an increase. And then we're gonna repeat that process six times total, which is gonna bring you up from 30, 30 stitches to 36 stitches, because you're adding six increases. All right, so that's four single crochets. Oops, there we go. One, two, three, four, and then our increase into the stitch after that. So that's gonna be five and six are both into the same stitch. So that's our first repeat. We want uh, six of those repeats total. So let's do our second repeat, four single crochets. One, two, three, 
and four, and then our increase five and six. Okay, there's our second repeat. Let's do our third, four single crochets. One, two, three, four, and this is gonna be five and six is gonna be our increase. And if you look, our increase will line up with the increases down on the third increase for each part. So our third and our sixth increase are gonna line up with the other ones. Again, just showing you how to see the difference between single crochets and increases, just because it helps a lot. Okay, let's keep doing this repeat. We're on our fourth repeat, four single crochets. One, two, three, four, and then our increase. Five and six. Get a little bit more yarn. One, two, three, four, and then our increase. Five and six. That's gonna be our fifth in uh, repeat. Now is our last repeat. One, two, three, four, and then our increase right here, five and six. There you go. Now you should have 36 stitches around. We can pull our stitch marker up and that is gonna be the end of round 10. Let me go ahead and mark that off as well. Okay, so now we're on to round 11 and pulled our stitch marker up. We're just gonna work around it. And for round 11, nice easy round, we're just gonna be doing a single crochet for each stitch all the way around. So that's just gonna be 36 single crochets, one into each stitch all the way around. And again, if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe down below. Um, if you subscribe, go ahead and check out our live stream crochet along. Um, we're gonna be doing a live crochet along for this strawberry on Sunday, the Sunday after this uh, pattern comes out. So I believe that's gonna be the 20th. Um, and just like all of uh, February 20th, that is. And just like all of our live streams, uh, it's going to start at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Sunday, or at least a vast majority of my live streams start at that time, um, right here on the YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe. We're also going to be doing a live crochet along on TikTok. Me and Drew together are going to do a live crochet along on the day that this pattern is released. So if you happen to watch, be watching uh, this video when the pattern is out, we're gonna be doing a live crochet along on our TikTok uh, channels together at the same time. Again, you can find both of our TikTok channels uh, in the description down below. I put links to both of us down there. Okay, so just a few more stitches here. One, two, okay. And this is gonna be our 36th single crochet and the end of round 11. I got my stitch marker already pulled up. I'm ahead of schedule. All right, so now we are on to round 12. For round 12, we're gonna be repeating what we did in the round uh, before our last round. So we're gonna be repeating basically what we did into round 10, but adding one additional single crochet between increases. So that's gonna mean that we're going to do five single crochets and then an increase repeated six times around. So that's five single crochets, one, two, three, four, and five, and then our increase into the next one right here. Six and seven are gonna be into the same stitch. And you can see how it lines up with our last increase as well, if you're looking at that. All right, so we're gonna repeat that process six times total. So let's do our second repeat. One, two, three, four, five, and then our increase six and seven. And that's gonna, this uh, round should bring you up from 36 stitches around to 42 stitches around, which is what you should have at the end of this round. And if you count, um, as you can tell, we're doing, well, let me, let me show you in a second. So this is gonna be our third increase right there. Let's keep doing it around. If you uh, wanna do the math, it's gonna be five single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, and then our increase is gonna add two to it. So that's gonna be six and seven. And if we're repeating seven stitches total six times, you're gonna bring you, uh, that's gonna multiply up to 42 stitches around, which is how you get your stitch count 
at the end of rounds when you're doing repeats. Five, and here's going to be six and seven. So there's a little bit of math in crochet, as long as you want to look for it. You don't always have to, especially if you're not a designer. Just follow the pattern. You're good to go. Okay. That's going to be our last increase and our 42nd stitch around. And uh, the end of round 12. Let's go ahead and mark it off. Now we're on to round 13. We're going to pull our stitch marker up. And round 13 is another round of just single crochets around. So you just want to do a single crochet into each stitch around 42 single crochets total. So just one single crochet all the way around. And now, uh, if you are watching this pattern and you're in this part of the pattern, usually people, I think, skip these rounds of just the being single crochets. But I wanted to do something kind of fun. So I'm doing a secret giveaway. So this is your chance for a very secret giveaway. I'm going to be giving away a free one-month membership to Club Crochet. All you have to do to enter is be listening to this part of the pattern, like the video, of course, and be subscribed to the channel. And then comment into the comments down below with an emoji of, let's see, what should we do an emoji of? How about an emoji of a watermelon? Because that'll be so weird, you know? Like, we have a pattern with strawberries. Maybe people think, oh, you, we're commenting with emojis of, like, what he should make next or something. But really, you're entering a secret giveaway. <laughs> So comment down below with an emoji of a watermelon if you have listened to this part of the pattern. And I'm going to choose one person uh, in the, let's see, uh, let's go with like a week or two after this pattern is done. I'm going to reply to that comment with, you won! And then, uh, and then with like an email for you to email me and reach out and then I'll give you a free one month membership to the website which will give you uh, all of the patterns on the website. Okay, okay, now back to the thing. Let's pretend we didn't do that. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of round 13. That's gonna be our 42nd stitch around. You should have 42 stitches around now. We're gonna pull our stitch marker up just like that. And now we are on to round 14. For round 14, we're going to be doing another round of increasing, um, six increases total. So we're going to do six single crochets and then an increase repeated six times around. So let's go ahead and do that. Six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then an increase into the next stitch right here. Seven and eight. So six single crochets, and then seven, eight is going to be our increase. Repeat it six times around. So let's do our second repeat. One, two, oops, three, four, five, six, and then our increase, seven and eight. Okay, get a little bit of our... My cat's fur is in the yarn. <laughs> Let's do our third repeat. And this is going to bring you up from 42 stitches around to 48 stitches around, which I believe, yes, 48 stitches is actually going to be the, um, the last stitch count that we're going to need uh, for a while because um, we're actually not going to increase it up any more than this. That's going to be our third repeat. And if you look, our third repeat should be like equally distanced around from our start of our round because we're equally halfway through. Let's keep doing this. One, two, three, a bit more yarn, four, five, six, and then our increase right here, seven and eight. And again, you should have 48 stitches um, by the end of round 14. Just a few more repeats. We're on our, I believe this is our fifth repeat. Here's going to be our last repeat. Two, three, four, five, 
six, and then an increase right here, seven and eight. Okay, so now you should have 48 stitches around and that'll be the end of round 14. Pull our stitch marker up, keep track of our progress in the PDF. Okay, so now we're on to round 15. Now, this part depends on if you're making a chocolate covered strawberry or a regular strawberry. So this video, I'm making a regular strawberry. For a regular strawberry, rounds 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So that's gonna be six rounds total are gonna be all single crochets. So six rounds in a row of just single crochets, okay? But if you're making a chocolate covered strawberry, we got something different here. If you're making a chocolate covered strawberry and you're currently working in your brown yarn, you want only two more rounds of single crochets. So round 15 and 16 only are gonna be single crochets in your brown yarn. And then we're gonna do some fancy uh, work to make a cool chocolate covered like, what's it called? Like a, like this. We're gonna be making like a drippy border. So I'm gonna go ahead and do something kind of weird here. I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do our six rounds of single crochets if you're making a regular strawberry off camera here. So I'm just gonna do six rounds of just single crochets in red here to get up to round 20. And I'll come back and I'll explain what I did. Um, and I'll do a little bit before I get to that. But in between that, I'm going to also make a chocolate covered strawberry here and I'm going to do up to round 16 of our chocolate strawberry. So I'm going to do all the way up to where we're going to do a drippy border. I'm going to come back into the video and I'm going to show you how to do the drippy border if you're making a chocolate strawberry and then how to change it back over to your red yarn if you want to, uh, you know, if you're doing a chocolate covered strawberry. But then after I do that explanation, I'm going to come back and then show you how to continue your regular strawberry after that. So Basically, <laughs> I know, I know, it's com it's kind of confusing. I'm gonna go ahead and just start our uh, rounds of single crochets. You want to do at least two rounds in a row of single crochets, especially if you're doing chalk covered. If you're doing a regular covered colored strawberry, just a regular one like I'm doing in this video, you want to do um, uh, six rounds total. So rounds, uh, let's count again. It'll be rounds 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So that's gonna be six rounds in a row, all single crochets. So I'm just gonna keep repeating around and I'll show you how to count back at the end uh, when I come back from our rounds of single crochets. So we're just gonna do six rounds total of just single crochets in red. And I'll be back in just a second with a regular strawberry, but I'll be back even sooner to show you how to do the drippy border if you're making your chocolate strawberry. Okay, I'll be back in just a sec. Okay, so I've just finished up round uh, 15 or 16 for the chocolate covered strawberry. Now, uh, in this quick section, I'm just going to show you how to do the drippy border for the chocolate. Um, if you want to add this like drippy border to the chocolate, just because it's kind of hard to explain via written pattern. So I wanted to do it in the video. So this is my uh, attempt to show you how to do that drippy border. It's actually not too tough. It's definitely harder than what, um, than the other parts of this pattern because we're going to be adding a few new stitches to it. So we're going to be learning the half double crochet and the double crochet in this part. Now, the first thing that you want to know uh, is the difference between the front loop and the back loop. And I talked about this shortly earlier on in the pattern. But if you look at the top of your crochet, you're going to see these V's, which are going to be... Uh, normally, we're working under both of these loops for each of our stitches. For this round, we're going to call this round 16B because it's optional. So we're not going to like... You don't need to do 16 round 16B, but you can if you're doing this chocolate covered strawberry version. So... In this round, you're only gonna be working into the front loop only, which means this one that's closest to you right here. So all the stitches in this round are only gonna be in this front loop only. Um, now this round really isn't too tough, it's just stitches, but they're all gonna be working to that front loop, so do not forget that. Okay, so to start round 15B, we're gonna be doing a repeat eight times in a row, and the repeat's gonna be single crochet into the first one, Okay, working in the front loop only, we're going to single crochet one. There you go. Now I'm in that front loop only. 
single crochet, boom, easy. Then we're gonna do a half double crochet into the next stitch. For a half double crochet, we're gonna yarn over, go into the next stitch. Again, we're only working into the front loop, just like that. Yarn over again, pull it through the loop. Now you have three loops on the hook and you're gonna yarn over and pull through all three of those loops simultaneously for half double crochet. So we go one, two, and three. And that's gonna be a half double crochet. It makes your stitches just a little bit taller. Next, we're gonna do two double crochets. So double crochet into the next two stitches, one for each stitch. For double crochet, we're gonna yarn over, go into the next stitch. Again, we're only working in the front loop. So angle from the bottom, make sure you're only in that front loop. Yarn over again and pull through the stitch. Now you should have three loops on the hook, just like the half double crochet. But this time we're gonna yarn over and only pull, pull through two of these loops. So one and two. And then we're gonna yarn over again and pull through these last two loops, one and two. That's gonna be a double crochet, uh, which is just a little bit taller than the half double crochet. Let's do another double crochet because we want two in a row. So single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, then another double crochet. So we yarn over into the next stitch right here. Yarn over again and pull through. Yarn over and pull through two, one, two. Yarn over again and pull through two, one, two. And that's it, that's our double crochet. So single crochet, half double crochet, two double crochets, and then we're gonna do half double crochet and a single crochet again. So first our half double crochet, we yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through, and then you have three loops, and for a half double crochet, we yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. One, two, and three. Okay. Then we're going to do a single crochet into the last one right here. Front loop only. Single crochet. And that is going to be the repeat. We're going to continue doing that repeat over and over all the way around. So let's do another one of those repeats. We want eight repeats total. It's going to be single crochet into the first. Front loop only half double crochet into the next. So we yarn over into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through all three loops at the same time. One, two, and three. And then two double crochets, yarn over into the stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then another one. So two double crochets in a row, through, pull through two, pull through two. There you go. And then a double crochet, or I mean a half double crochet after the two double crochets. Yarn over into the next stitch, pull through, and then pull through all three, one, two, and three. And then another single crochet. And that's it. That's going to be the repeat all the way around for our, um, our drippy border here. And then I'm going to show you, I'm just going to keep doing that repeat. I'm on my third repeat now. Again, you want eight repeats of this. Really, you don't really have to count your repeats you just keep doing it until you're at the end of the of the round just keep repeating over and over these stitches the single crochet half double crochet two double crochets then another half double crochet and a single crochet we're just going to keep repeating that until we get back around single crochet there's my half double and if, as long as you keep doing that repeat and not skip any stitches, you should end up at the end of the round with a single crochet. And then once we're at the end of this round, I'll show you how to make, how to continue the round and pull up with your red yarn and continue on in red after it. So I'll go ahead and continue these repeats all the way to the end of the round. I'll be back in just a second, just continuing the repeats until I get around to the end of the round. Okay, I'm at my last stitch here. This is my last single crochet into the front loop only. And now I should be back around to the beginning of our round. Now, uh, to finish up with the chocolate color, you want to start by slip stitching into the next stitch. Uh, and now we're working into both loops here. So go into the next stitch under both loops. 
um, just the first single crochet that you made in 16B, and then slip stitch one. Oh, I'm sorry, first slip stitch, let me explain that. I, I don't know if I've explained a slip stitch yet. You go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through that stitch, both loops, and then pull through the loop on the hook like that. That's gonna be a slip stitch. It's kind of like half of a single crochet. Now we can cut the yarn. Uh, you don't need a very long end. We're just gonna be hiding this end. And you can just pull it all the way through. And then take your needle, thread it onto that end. Let's get this other tail end all the way in there. And now we're gonna do something called a hidden end with this. Uh, so we're basically going to be replicating the top of these stitches with this end uh, so that you can't tell where it is. To do that, we're going to go into the back of the next stitch. So this is the stitch that we just single crocheted into. I mean slip stitched into. Next, we're going to go into the back of this stitch under both loops. Like that. And then back in through where this end is coming out. So right into where that end is coming out. And then into the back of a few of these stitches. See, so I'm just like kind of finding my way down, just like that. And we can work around this tail end and you just pull it nice and tight, but not too tight and see how it just like replicates the top. You can't tell where it starts and begins, starts and ends rather. And then we're gonna work, we can work around this tail end uh, into the next round if you want to, or you can just hide it on the inside. It shouldn't come apart. Okay, so now we want to continue in red so we want to grab our red yarn, and this is how you get back to uh, regular just single crochets into each stitch around. So we're gonna take your red yarn and make a slip knot. So we're gonna fold the yarn over itself like this to make a little loop. And then we're gonna fold that loop over itself like so, and then pull the inside through like that. Now when you pull this tail end, nothing will happen, but when you pull this end, it'll tighten the loop a little bit. It's called a slip knot, and it's going to be really useful right now because it's going to be how we're going to get started into our next round. So for the next round, we're going to be working into the back loops only, the unused back loops only from round 16. So first you want to find the first stitch that you made. The best way to do that is find that first single crochet that you made, which is actually going to be right here, like this, and point poke like just straight through with a needle, and right above that is going to be where you're going to start. So that is going to be your first back loop only, right here. So what you want to do is take your crochet hook, get into that back loop only, pointing straight into it, and then yarn over with this loop and pull this end tighter so it's tight around the crochet hook. And then just pull that loop through the back loop. And then with this end attached to the ball, not this tail end, you hold that tail end over like that, with the end attached to the ball, we want to yarn over and pull through the loop to make a chain, like that. That's going to keep it into place. Okay, so for this round, this is technically going to be round 17. And for your round 17, we're going to single crochet into all of these back loops only. All of these back loops, each one all the way around, just one single crochet. But we're going to start with the same stitch that you just chained into. So you want to go into the same stitch that you started with right here. And I'm going to keep my tail end over it like that. And then I'm going to yarn over, pull through, then yarn over and pull through two. Okay, so that's just the first one. The first one's in the same space that you chained. And then after that, you're just going to go into all of these back loops. See how I'm folding it up like that? Makes it a little bit easier for you to see where the stitches are but we're gonna go only into those back loops. So here's the next back loop. Yarn over, pull through. I'm gonna try to keep this tail end over it so that I can work around it. And then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through two for our single crochet. Let's do one more into this next stitch right here. Again, we're only in that back loop. We're just gonna single crochet around. All right, I've worked around it three stitches. I think that's enough now for us to ignore that tail end. And now you can kind of see how it's, see it looks like we're not even working into the piece because we're working only in these back loops. Again, when you look on the inside, you see all these, this line, and that's it. We're just gonna keep working all the way around into those back loops. 
And when we get back around, we can work uh, into both loops again. Now, don't forget this round, the first round where you're making uh, single crochets in red, if you're doing these chocolate covered strawberries, is going to be round 17. So I am currently working on round 17. And again, the uh, we the round 17, 18, 19, and 20. So the remaining like four more rounds are going to be all single crochets. And we can just continue on in our piece in red. We don't need to uh, change back to our chalk cover at all. We can just keep crocheting around in red. And when we get back around to the beginning of this round, or beginning of round 17, we can work round 18 into each of the single crochets that we made in the round that we're currently working on. Uh, starting with the first single crochet you made, not the first chain that you made. Um, that's important because you just want to make sure that you have the right stitch count. Um, if you want to count your stitches right now, you still should only have 48 stitches around. And that goes the same for round 16B, the the round where we were doing the we were where we were doing the half double crochets and the double crochets. That round still only has 48 stitches around. It's just that the stitches were kind of weird. You know, some were single crochets, well, some were half double crochets. You get it. You get it. All right, we're coming back around now. And you can see I'm going pretty quick. I'm just folding it over so that it's really easy for me to see with where these back loop only stitches are. And if you want to, if you didn't want to do this drippy border, but you still wanted to do a chocolate covered strawberry, you can always use the perfect stripe method, which will help you get a really clean stripe. And I'll put a link to the video where I explain how that works um, right here. Okay, so this is going to be our last stitch right there. You can tell because there's just nothing after it. There you go. And if you want to count your stitches, you again, you should have only 48 stitches around. And now we're on to round 18. Uh, and again, we want 17, 18, 19, and 20. So four more rounds, all the way to round 20, uh, all in this red, uh, in just single crochets. So the first stitch is gonna be the first single crochet that you made. You can tell because it's just that first B right there. Oh, just like duh. that, there you go. You wanna make sure you're under both loops now. You can work under both loops again. And then just continue by doing single crochets all the way around for a few more rounds, all the way to round 20. So it's gonna be four more rounds in this red. Now, when I come back, I will be back with our red yarn and we'll do, um, I will have finished round 20 uh, all in red. So I'm going to go ahead and do this chocolate covered strawberry off camera. All right, be back in a bit. Okay, so this is going to be the end of round 20 and our six rounds of single crochet. Now, if you uh, want to count your rounds, um, the, the best way I think to do it is look for the last increase if you count down. So if you look down, you'll see like 1v, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then this one right here. You can see there's two in the same spot. And if you count that, the ones after this this our last increase so that's going to be the end of round i think 14 so that'll be 15 16 17 18 19 20 we just finished up round 20. okay so that's going to be the end of round 20 and all of our rounds of single crochet for our uh red our regular strawberry now we're going to add the face so um, there are a few different ways to add the face. I'm going to add a picture right on screen right now to how um, to how Drewby likes to add the face. He likes to add his a little bit lower um, and his smile a little bit lower and add the pink cheeks. Now, we're going to be making ours somewhat similar, but a little bit different. We're going to be doing, we're still going to be doing the pink cheeks, but I'm going to add uh, eyelashes so I can show you how to do that. And I'm going to add, uh, still add the cheeks and I'm, my smile is going to be a little bit higher up than he usually does. Um, just because we both have our different styles of how to make our face. And um, yeah, that's just, that's that. So we're going to use our six or our, our 10 millimeter eyes for the eyes here. 
and the eyes are going to go into uh, between rounds uh, 13 and 14, although you can put them pretty much wherever you want. Now, I'm just going to count up from the bottom, and I want it on the opposite side of where the end of our round is. Okay, so we want it on this side right here. That's going to be the front. And now we're going to count up. So it's going to be round one right here. So that's going to be round one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So this is going to be round 13. So we want it somewhere in this round is going to be where we're going to add our um, our eyes. And our eyes are good. We want to add our eyes about 7 to 8 stitches apart. So um, first, let's uh, go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So let's go... I want to have, let's have this increase right here. Try to make this increase the center of our stitch. So let's go uh, from there. We'll go one, two, three, four. And then from the other side, one, two, three, four, which would be right there. So let's try it right here. Like that. Let's see how this looks first. One eye, and then I want seven stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the next one over would be right here. Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty. I like that. I like that. So that's where we're going to be placing the eyes. I have them just a few stitches apart. Looks pretty good. Now I'm not going to lock the eyes in just yet. Before I lock the eyes in, I want to add our smile, and then um, uh, maybe, and then add our, our eyelashes before we lock the eyes in too. So first thing is a smile. So what you need for your smile, so you're just going to need some black yarn. Um, you can also use some like embroidery thread for this, if you'd rather use a make smaller mouth. And uh, uh, me and Drew both have slightly different smiles that we like to add to ours. Um, so he adds his smile a few rounds under. So he adds his like down here, like three rounds under, and then across and then up so it's a very v shaped as you saw in the picture i i i like to make mine a little bit more of like a slight smile um so i'm gonna just go one round under let's just do a few stitches away so like one like right there it's good and then i'm gonna do a few stitches across one two three four let's go like that maybe mm. yeah let's try that Looks like we might want to separate the eyes just one more stitch to make it more even. And then I'm going to come out through just under where the smile is because I want it to be a very subtle smile. If you want, um, you want to go lower, go right here, and then it'll make the smile even bigger. But I just want it to be like very subtle like that. Um, but the further you put it down, the more of an of a obvious smile it's going to be. So I'm just going to go one stitch down right there. I'm going to come out like that. And then I'm going to go around this end and back into where we came out right here. Just like that. Now the harder I pull it, the more of a V it's going to be. More of like a like a sharp smile it's going to be, but if I pull it just slightly, it's going to be more of a subtle smile. That's a, that's a smile that I current personally like. Um, again, Druby likes a much more uh, exaggerated V. Uh, and then also, if you want to try a different face, this is kind of like a little fat face that I did, um, which I have a video tutorial for how to do that. I'll put it on uh, screen right here. Um, but that is another option for a smile that you can do. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of different embroidered smiles that you can do. Just do the one that you like the most. So now that I have that in there, I'm just going to double knot. And then I can tweak it a little bit. Let's make sure it's like how we want it to be. That's pretty good. Double knot like that. And then we cut it nice and close on the inside. We're going to keep this thread on the needle just for a second. And then I like to pull out our stitch just a little bit so that it makes the smile a little bit more subtle. I'm just going to go in. I'm going to pull this knot out just a little bit like, like that. That's pretty good. And we'll probably tweak it and mess with it a little bit later as well. 
but that is going to be how to make a very simple smile. The next thing I want to do is, uh, well, let's see what this eye looks like if I put it one more stitch away. Let's see, does that make it more even or less even? Hmm, it's very subtle, isn't it? Uh, let's do, yeah, let's keep it there. That looks more even, I think, to me, but it's very subtle. Next thing I want to do before locking the eyes in is we want to add some eyelashes. And there's a few different ways you can do that. I think that the easiest way is just come out um, one stitch. Uh, well, you can either, yeah, let's go out one stitch over from where one of the eyes is. Let's try that. No, let's come out where the eye actually comes out. So if you pull out the eye just a little bit like that, go come out from where that eye is being put in. So like, like that. Okay. Just like so. And then we're just gonna go, we want our tail end to just be kind of small there. We want to go a couple of stitches over. So let's just go one, two stitches over, and then one stitch up like that. Or do we want to go one and in? Actually, let's do that. Let's go one and in like that. Okay, so instead of going directly up, we're going to go slightly to the right. Let's try this. And then we're going to take that and go right back in through the center like that. Okay, we can pull both these ends a little tighter. And you can see that's just gonna add some very simple and subtle eyelashes to our piece. So you can see how that is gonna look. So then I'll just double knot this on the inside, these two ends. We're gonna need just a little bit more black yarn for the other one. That's pretty good. And cut it pretty close. We don't need it too close, but like that's probably fine. Make sure it's how we want it to be. And once you're happy with that, we're gonna take our little locking mechanism here. We're just gonna put it on the end of our eye and just pull it in to lock it into place. Like this. There we go. Now our eye is locked into place with a little eyelash. Isn't that cute? So cute. Okay, now let's add another eyelash to the other side. Now I just want a little bit more black yarn for this. Again, we're saving all of these extra threads to stuff it into our piece so that we can save on um, waste. And then for the other eyelash, we're gonna go, we're gonna do on the other side here, we're gonna come out, we're gonna start in one stitch. We're gonna start out and then come back in to where the eye is. So like this, and then we're gonna come up just like we did on the other side and then back through where that one is. Just like that. There we go, now we have an eyelash on both sides and we could just double knot this on the inside. One and two. There we go. Cut it nice and close. Look at how the eyelash looks. I like it. Sometimes I like to like kind of tweak the eyelash a little bit so it's more like curved, but I think that's pretty good. And then we're gonna take that locking, nether locking mechanism thing, put it on the back and just lock it into place like that. There we go. Okay, and then the next thing I wanna do uh, before we continue on our piece is we wanna get some pink yarn and add these little cheeks under the eyelashes, or under the eyes. So we're just gonna need a little bit of our pink yarn. Barely need any, really. Um, and then we're gonna go like that. And then let's just go, uh, let's go, let's try, well, is that too close, you think? Let's see. No, I think, well, hmm. if I do a couple stitches over like that, how will that look? Well, that look cute. How, where do we do it on the chocolate one? Oh, okay, I did it two rounds down on the chocolate one. I think that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good spot, I think. So let's do that. 
We're gonna go two rounds below, right here, a little bit, little bit on the outside of where the eye is. We're gonna go over two stitches, one, two, right here, just like that. And you can add it twice if you want to, or you can just do one. Um, I think just one, I think looks a little bit better, but you know, doubling it up is always an option. So we're gonna go like that. Let's go ahead and double knot it. One, and two, really simple. Cut the end. We'll save this little thread to stuff in there, and then we'll use the other end to add another cheek on the other side. So on the other side, we're gonna do two rounds under, about right there. Is that two rounds under? Let's see, does it line up with the other one? It does. Yes, it does, okay. That, and then a couple stitches over, one, two, like right here. Let's see how that one looks. Hmm, this one looks a little further away, doesn't it? Let's see. Well. This is always the part where I'm like, do I like it? Do I not like it? I think I like that. I like that. Let's go ahead and double knot it. I'm being, I'm just being picky. Okay. Double knot this on the inside and cut it close. And we'll add this to our stuffing stack. Okay, so now we got our face sewn on. The um, the rest of it, the the all the um, the seeds and stuff we're gonna add after it's already stuffed closed. So we don't need to worry about that right now. Um, I think that's probably just about it. Now we can get back to our pattern. So let's go ahead redo that last single crochet to get it into place. Um, but I think that's pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so pull our stitch marker up. Let's continue in our pattern. We are currently on to round 21. We've done our six rounds of single crochets. Now we're on to round 21. For round 21, we're going to start our process of decreasing it back down. So we're going to be making it go in now instead of it continually coming out and being becoming bigger, we're gonna start decreasing, which is gonna make us go in a little bit. So we're gonna learn a new stitch, which is our invisible decrease, but it's pretty easy. We're gonna start by doing six single crochets and then our invisible decrease. So let's get started with that. Six single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we want an invisible decrease. For our invisible decrease, we're gonna go into the front loops only for the next two stitches. Let me get our needle here to show you. So normally we're going under both of these loops at the same time. That's how we've been doing it this whole pattern. But this time for an invisible decrease, we just wanna go under this front loop and this front loop at the same time. So both this one and this one at the same time, and then you do a single crochet once you're into those stitches. The easiest way I find to do that is take your crochet hook and point up from the bottom like this and go boop. You should only have one little loop there and then spin your crochet hook around so that you're placed right under the second one. And then boop, there's your second front loop. So it should look like that. Then once you're into both of those front loops at the same time, you yarn over and pull it under those front loops. It really helps to do a scoop here. Scoop is really useful for an invisible decrease. And then you yarn over and pull through the two loops on the hook to finish up your invisible decrease. And this is gonna decrease it down very subtly, so it's really hard to see where these are in the pattern. Okay, so that's six single crochets and then an invisible decrease. And we wanna repeat that process six times total. And because we're doing six invisible decreases, this is gonna bring you down from 48 stitches back down to 42 stitches. And we're gonna slowly bring it back down as we go through these remaining rounds. So let's do our second repeat, six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then our invisible decrease. So we go front loop, pop, flip it around, go 
into the next front loop, pop, and then single crochet. There we go. Okay, so that's gonna be your second repeat. Third repeat, six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and then our invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, and then single crochet. Really scoop it in there, pull it through. If you wanna learn more about the invisible decrease, um, make sure to check out my video tutorial on decreasing. It really helps out. There's a bunch of different kinds of ways to decrease. Um, this is just the most hidden method. Uh, but there are a bunch of other methods, and each of them have uh, different reasons why you'd want to use one over another one. Um, I'll put a link on screen uh, right now to help you out. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then front loop front loop, and then single crochet. Okay, just a few more repeats now. Three, four, five, and six single crochets, and then our invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, pull through, pull through. Okay, one more repeat. And again, you should have 42 stitches at the end of this round. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then our last one, front loop, front loop, pull through, pull through. And that's gonna be the end of round 21. Now you should have 42 stitches around and you can see how it's kind of very subtly pulling it back in and it's starting to close up, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want to happen. Okay, pull our stitch marker over. And now we are on to round 22. For round 22, you're gonna to start to see the repeat happening now, or the pattern continuing. Uh, this time we're gonna do five single crochets and then an invisible decrease. So instead of doing six, like we did in round 21, in round 22 here, we're gonna do five and then an invisible decrease repeated six times around. So let's do five single crochets. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and then our invisible decrease. So we go front loop, front loop, and then a single crochet into both of those. And let's do our second repeat, five single crochets. It's one, two, three, four, five, and then invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. Here's our third repeat two, three, four, five, front loop, front loop, single crochet. Pretty easy. I really like using those invisible decreases. Uh, the, at this point in this pattern, um, you know almost all the stitches that are used in a majority of amigurumi patterns. We will be learning a few other stitches in just a bit when we make the top of our piece, um, but the majority of this pattern is made with these stitches and, and almost all, well, almost all of my amigurumi are made using these three stitches of doing single crochets, increases and decreases at the right times to shape your piece in the right way. One, two, three, four, five, and then our invisible decrease. And there we go. Now you should have 36 stitches around. That's the stitch count for the end of round 22, which we just finished up. We'll pull our stitch marker up. And now we are on to round 23. For round 23, we're continuing the process, but adding our taking one less single crochet between invisible decreases since we have less stitches to work with now. So now on to round 23, we're gonna do four single crochets and then our invisible decrease. So that's one, two, three, four, and then our invisible decrease, we go front loop, front loop, single crochet. And then we're gonna repeat that process six times total. So four single crochets, invisible decrease, six times in a row. Let's do our second repeat. One, 
two, three, four, and then invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. And this should bring you down uh, by repeating this process uh, six times total. It's going to bring you down from 36 stitches, which is what you had at the end of round 22, to 30 stitches, which is what you're going to have at the end of this round, round 23. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, and then our invisible decrease. Okay, I think that's our fourth repeat. Just a few more. One, two, three, and four, and then invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, and then single crochet. Last repeat, four single crochets. Two, oopsies, three, four, and then our invisible decrease. Okay pull our stitch marker out just a little bit now because now we want to uh, stuff our piece a little bit. We want to stuff it, um, well, the majority of the stuffing real, really is happening right now, but it really doesn't look like as much. So we're going to grab some stuffing. Um, I'm grabbed, I actually grabbed a lot of stuffing. And we're just going to start to stuff it up a little bit. I usually like to do one layer of stuffing like this. And you'll have more chances before the end of this round, or before the end of this piece to stuff it up more. I usually like to do a layer of stuffing like that, really kind of fill it in on the bottom, make sure it fits all the other places. And then we're gonna take all of our little ends here. We got more over here. Just like that. I'm just gonna take those and stuff it in there and try to get it into the very center of that stuffing. That, and then I'll add just a little bit more stuffing on top of it. We're gonna add a, probably the rest of the stuffing in a little bit, but we want to decrease it down a little bit more before we continue stuffing just because it's a little easier to stuff it later than it is right now. Okay, let's get our yarn in there. Okay, now we are on to round 24. In round 24, we're continuing our process of decreasing it down. So in our last round, we did four single crochets and then an invisible decrease. In this round, round 24, we're doing three single crochets and then an invisible decrease repeated six times around. So there's one, two, and three, and then our invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. Six repeats. So there's that was our first. Let's do our second. One, two, three, and then front loop, front loop, single crochet. One, two, three, invisible decrease. One, two, three, and an invisible decrease. Okay, just a few more here. And this should bring you down from uh, 30 stitches back down to 20, um, 24 stitches. So that's what you should have at the end of this round. Okay, one more repeat. One, two, three single crochets, and an invisible decrease decrease just like that. Okay. All right. So that's the end of round uh, 24. For round 25, we're decreasing yet again. We want to do, let's pull our stitch marker up here. We want to do um, two single crochets and then an invisible decrease repeated six times around. So one and two single crochets and then invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. Okay. Repeat over and over. One, two, and then invisible decrease one. This is our second repeat. We want six repeats total to bring us down from 24 stitches back down to 18 stitches. 
So you can see we're almost done with our piece. We're just going to keep doing these invisible decreases with one less single crochet in each round, which is going to continuously bring us back down. So there's one, two, invisible decrease one. One, two, invisible decrease. One, two, get our stitch marker ready, invisible decrease. Okay, so you should have 18 stitches now. That's the end of round uh, 25. For round 26, our second to last round, we're going to do one single crochet and then an invisible decrease six times around. To bring us down from 18 to 12. So there's one single crochet and then one invisible decrease. Six times. So let's do our second one. Second repeat. One single crochet. One invisible decrease. A single crochet and an invisible decrease. Here's our third one. Move our stitch marker out of the way. Fourth repeat, single crochet, invisible decrease, single crochet, and invisible decrease. And that's going to be the end of round 26. You should only have 12 stitches around now, all the way around. Okay, now the last round, we'll pull our stitch marker up, even though we're going to pull it out in just a second. Our last round here is uh, going to be round 27. And for round 27, we're going to do an invisible decrease all the way around until we get back around to the end of the round, which means we're going to do six invisible decreases total. So, six invisible decreases. It's easiest now. Normally I like to keep my hand in the piece and pinch it like this, but it's easiest now because this hole's getting so tiny to just hold, pinch it like that instead and then go front loop, front loop, single crochet. There's our first invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. There's our second one. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. There's our third. One, two, single crochet. There's our fourth. Here's our fifth, and then one more front loop, front loop, and then single crochet, just like that. Now you should only have six stitches around. Um, before I cut and pull through, I'm gonna count my stitches. We're gonna see where this loop is being pulled out. Look at that V, and that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six is gonna be right there. And that's gonna be the end of our round. Okay, so now you can just cut the yarn. You don't need very long of an end, about that long. We're just gonna use it to sew it closed. We're just gonna pull it all the way out. You don't need a chain or anything, just like that. And uh, next we can pull out the stitch marker because we don't really need that anymore. So we're just gonna go ahead. I'm just gonna pull it out. I'm gonna try to pull it out with just one stitch at a time. We are going to be adding um, seeds after this. Uh, and if I did this right, we could use this and four seeds, but I didn't really do that right. The best way to use our stitch marker to add seeds is every other round to add the stitch marker in, and that might be a pretty good way to start the seeds. Um, I just didn't really think about it until later on in the video. I'm just going to pull from here to pull out the bottom like that, and then out like that. I'm gonna take our stitch marker and we're gonna stuff that into our piece. I like using the back of my crochet hook to help me add stuffing into the top of our piece. And then we're gonna add the rest of the stuffing. Now what's really important is to equally put the stuffing around so that it's equally distributed so that you don't have a lumpy um, strawberry. But honestly, this part is like all up to you how much you wanna stuff it. I usually like to stuff it like 
I don't know. It's it's dangerous to overstuff it because if you stuff it too much, you're going to see the stuffing through your piece, uh, especially if your stitches are a little bit more loose than normal. Um, so you might want to understuff it, but again, it's all a preference. I personally like it uh, really just right in between. I think... I think com learning how much stuffing to add into your piece kind of comes with um, time of, of continuously stuffing pieces and knowing how much it goes. So like practice makes perfect when it comes to that. But it's really hard to remove stuffing. It's, very, it's, it's a lot easier to add it in, especially at this point in the pattern. Now, if you're having some trouble, like I'm kind of having trouble. I'm not really having too much trouble with my stuff. But if you are having a little bit more trouble with getting the stuffing in there, a good way to help you out is to use a pencil with an eraser. Let me go, or or use a stick, um, like this, like a little skewer. Uh, for some reason, that can make it a little bit easier to grab onto the stuffing. You see how quickly it's being stuffed in there now that I'm using a stick instead. And I'm trying to make sure all the stuffing's on every side here. Just like so. Sometimes it's easier to add a little bit less stuffing each time. Like um, not going too much stuffing at once. Just a little bit at a time usually makes it a little bit easier. There we go. That was a pretty good chunky one right there. I can feel it. So we're going to do a little bit less like that as we go to not overstuff it and to make it a little easier to get the stuffing in in general. But I'm, my last stuffing was over here a little bit more, so now I'm trying to move it up a little bit that way. I'm just trying to fill in all the pieces so that there's not too much stuffing into one area. Now, bigger pieces like this are obviously um, gonna use up a lot more stuffing than my normally small pieces. So be aware of that. If you are using like a pillow or something, this might use a decent amount of your pillow stuffing. That's okay. Stuffing's nice and cheap. Okay. There we go. Let's feel it. It's a, it's a little weak down there. You can see how when I pinch it, it like holds that position. I don't really want that. I want it to kind of bounce back into shape. So we want to get a little bit more stuffing down to the bottom of our piece. So we're going to probably add a little bit more. I'll go ahead and continue adding our stuffing and I'll, I'll come back when I'm done here so you don't have to keep just watching me stuff our piece up over and over and over again. Okay, I think this is going to be good. I think I like that amount of stuffing there. See, I'm trying to make sure it's not too much where you can see your, the stuffing through the stitches, but it's enough where if you like push it in, it gives you it pushes back <laughs> pushes back all right so next thing you want to do is we want to just sew the top closed so we can just take this tail end attach it to our darning needle and sewing closed is pretty easy all you need to do is go into the front loops of all the stitches around so after this one right starting right here we're just going to front loop only just like how you did the invisible decreases but into each one so there's one two we're just can keep continuing around all the way and you'll see the magic of how sewing closed works to all those front loops two more there's one here's the last one right eh, like that and then you can just pull this and it'll close that up sometimes i like to hold it right there to help close it up a little bit better just like that we'll go back in and then out through really wherever you want. That should be enough to hold it closed, especially because we're going to be sewing on a leaf over that anyhow. That's pretty good. Cut it close. And now we have the main body of our strawberry done. The next thing we want to do before we work on the leaf on the top is we want to add the seeds onto the strawberry itself. Now this part is a little tedious, but it's not necessarily that difficult. It's just kind of tedious. 
what you want to do is you want to grab a decent amount of yellow yarn about like let's start with like this much we can always add more later on we're just going to thread it onto a needle and there are a few ways you can do this um I find that the best way to start is to find a one line that goes down uh, and work your way all the way up and then uh, work back down. So we're going to start from, let's start, this is why the end of the round would have been really nice, like if we just had where the end of the round was all the way around. Um, so let's go ahead and start like right here. We're going to start by coming out, um, let's actually, yeah, let's come out, let's start by going straight through the center. And then out a couple of stitches up, like right there. Okay, and I'm going to pull it almost all the way through so that just that little bit of the tail end is coming out. And then I'm going to go up just one stitch. And then I'm going to go up two, let's see, two stitches. Let's look at the other one here. Looks like each round is like, yeah, you have one round in between stitches. So go up one stitch and then out two stitches skip around and then come out one like that so we go one we're just going to keep doing that all the way up make sure that your stuffing is staying in your piece though one stitch up two rounds up and i'm just following this increase all the way up as i do this one stitch up right one stitch up yeah one stitch up skip around and go up One stitch up, skip around, and go up. We'll pick the stiff the stuffing clothes a lot more at the end too. One stitch up, skip around, go up. One stitch, skip around, and up. And I think that's probably yeah, that's probably high enough for our um, where we want our our uh, seeds and you can add as many or as little seeds as you want obviously we're gonna go in here and the next thing you want to do is we want to scatter them apart so let me look at let me show you on this one I scatter them about like five rounds apart and then I do one in the center see so it's like so it looks like a little bit more even when I did it on this one I also added eyebrows using two seeds too because I thought it was funny so we want to go in and then come out let's go out like five rounds over so one two three four let's go five like that right one two three four five yep okay you can see like eventually we're gonna run out of yarn but we can come back down and we can add to it and stuff like that it's not too hard and then i'm just gonna go one stitch up and then out five stitches over so one two three four five like that and one stitch up and then come out one two three four this part's a little bit more like um opinionated because it's kind of like six stitches apart there but that's okay one one two three four let's go like that stitch right there. Yeah, that's probably a good one. And go up around. Come out. One, two, three, four. Let's go right here. This looks pretty good because it looks like it's going to be even-ish on the face. Which is what we want, really. Up. And then one, two, three, four. Five looks like about right there. Up stitch. One, two, three, four. Let's go like five right here. So I'm actually going. Actually, no, no, that's that is right. Yeah. Five and then up a stitch. Okay, so now we went all the way around with them. You can see how we've gone all the way in a circle. Next, we want to go in between where these two are. Around down about like right maybe right there let's see and we want to fill in the centers so in between each of these rounds we're going to put one 
like that. Actually, we can go down one to save on because we don't need that many, you know? So we'll go down one and then we'll go out. This time I'm not really counting my stitches. I'm just kind of finding in between these rounds. We want it to be one round beneath them. So there's a round in between each of these things. Actually, let's go up one. Let's go right. Let's try like right there. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So you see what I mean? I'm just kind of like eyeing where in between these stitches are to add another another seed in between them. So we go right there. Then right here. This one I really want it like right in the center of the the mouth. Because I want it right in the center of the face so that it's more centered. So I'm kind of making taking some liberties here. Um, actually, we want this one to be one round up. Like that. You can see what I mean. I'm just kind of like eyeballing it. I want it about right there. And I'm just going to keep doing that all the way around um, till he is. it is completely covered in these in seeds. Now... When I get to the face here, I'm going to be skipping like a lot. So I want it, I want to give myself about like this much space around the face where there's no um, seeds. Here you can see it on my finished one. See how I've like skipped, ignore these ones right here, but see how like I've added like the, there's like a, there could be a stitch right here. There could be another one right here. Um, there could be one right in the center. You see what I mean? But I didn't do that. Instead, I just kind of like skipped around and um, and made it so there's a lot of space in between. So that is what's really important. Try to make sure there's space in between the face. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to continue this up and fill our face with, uh, with seeds. And I'll be back in just a second once that's done uh, to show you how to add the little thing on the top there. Okay. Okay, I'm just coming near the end now, and there's a few places where I haven't really filled in uh, the, the seeds, so I'm just going to kind of fill in by going pretty far away. Now, I've added some extra yarn, as you can probably tell, because it's a little bit longer of an end now. Um, so what I did was I just worked my way back down and double knotted to the bottom tail end, and then I started a new one after that. Um, so I'll show you how to how I did that in just a second, because I'll do it again. Um, but I didn't have enough yarn the first time, so I had to work my way back to the center to double knot and reapply uh, some more yarn. And now I'm just filling in just some, just some random spaces where I feel like there's just not enough seeds. Well, like, I think this probably could be like the last one, actually. Let's see. Mm, so anywhere else I mean maybe up here but there's going to be a green leaf on the top so we don't have to worry about that I think this is probably a good last one so we're going to go through there we're going to go wherever you finished up just come out all the way down through where you started so you have something to double knot to and then you'll take these two tail ends here and we'll just double knot them together cut close and then stuff it back into the piece so just like this just Double knot, there's one, and two, and cut it somewhat close, but like right like that, and then we'll just take this tail end and just stuff it back into your piece. Now I like to just like kind of squish my strawberry a little bit, make sure all those stitches are a little looser and they find their own space. And then you wanna pick out all the stuffing that might have been pulled out when you were doing this. So just there's a, these little threads every now and then of stuffing that you just wanna kind of clean up. That's probably pretty good. I'll probably do some more cleanup a little later, but I think that's pretty good. Okay. 
So now we have the main part of our strawberry done. The last bit that we want to add is our, um, what is it called? A, uh, calyx. Uh, that is the other, that is what the technical term for the leafy bit at the top of your strawberry is called. So we just need to crochet that. We're going to put our strawberry itself to the side and get our green yarn now. Get our green yarn ready. And the beginning of our leafy bit is going to start the same way. Drop my green yarn. It's going to start the same way as we started with the, um, the strawberry itself. So we're going to start with a magic loop. Now, since I already showed you how to do the magic loop, I'm not going to uh, teach you again. I'm just going to go ahead and make one really quick. There we go. And we're going to start with round one. And round one is going to be the exact same as how we started with the other one. We're just going to single crochet six times into the center of the magic loop. So we're just going to go into that center and single crochet six. So there's one, two, three. Let's get a little bit more yarn. Four, five and six. So really easy, six single crochets all the way around. Pull it a little tighter. We'll grab just a little bit of yarn here for our stitch marker, although we probably won't need very much. There's only, I think there's only, yeah, there's only eight rounds in this part. So I'm just gonna put it in the center of that and then tighten it nice and closed, just like that. Pull it out a little bit. We're gonna use this tail end to actually tie it onto the top. So we, you can work around it if you want to make sure it's uh, in place. I'm gonna pull our stitch marker over like that. And that's gonna be the end of round one. You should have six single crochets into a little magic loop like that. Okay, so for round two, three, and four, so that's three rounds in a row, two, three, and four, we're just gonna single crochet into each stitch around. So there should only be six single crochets all the way around. To find your first one, we're going to count back one, two, three, four, five, six, right here. And we're just going to single crochet into each stitch around. Now, here's how you're going to end, uh, go around the tail end. You're just going to place that tail end over the edge of your piece. Let's make sure we're not working around our stitch marker. Take your other end and just single crochet and make sure that this tail end is worked around it. You can do that just for the first two stitches. So there's our first single crochet. Here is our second single crochet and again we're doing one into each stitch now that i did two i can just pull it all the way out like that um let's go ahead and just like cut our stitch markers so it's more evenly ended there because it was kind of getting really weird and thready but we can hold both those ends over to the side we'll just keep doing our single crochets so there's our third fourth just one single crochet into each stitch there's five, and last one is six. That's the end of round two. And again, we're doing three rounds of this. So we'll pull our stitch marker up here and keep doing that. So there's our first round done. Now here's our second round. Again, we're working in a spiral, no need to turn. Just do a single crochet in each round. So there's one, two, three, Four, five, and one more right here will be six. There's our second round of just single crochets. Pull our stitch marker up. We're gonna work around it. One more round of just single crochets. Got one. Two. Three, four, five, one more right here. It's gonna be six. Okay. That's gonna be the end of round four and our three rounds of just single crochets all the way around. Pull our stitch marker up. 
Now we're on to round five. For round five, we're gonna work only in the front loops only of all the stitches around, and we're gonna do an increase or two single crochets into each front loop only all the way around. So again, front loop only, that's gonna mean this one. Okay, so just that first loop. This is both loops. So you, you kind of see how there's two strands there. You only want to go into the front loop for this one. And this, this is because we want it to start going out like really drastically here. So we want to work only on the front loops for this. So going into only those front loops, we're going to start in this first one right here. We're going to do an increase or two single crochets into that same front loop. So there's one single crochet and then one into the same one. It's going to be two. So there's our first increase, two single crochets. So there's one increase, aka two stitches. We're going to do six of those total. So here's our second increase and our fourth single crochet. Okay, here's our, here's going to be our fifth increase, which is going to be our, I mean our third increase, which is going to be our fourth stitch, our fifth stitch and our sixth stitch. And you should have 12 stitches by the end of this round. Here's going to be our fourth increase. And again, don't forget, you're only working into those front loops only. That's why it's really open right there. Okay. There's this next one. Increase one and two into the same stitch. And the last one right here, it's going to be one and two into the same stitch. Okay, now we can pull our stitch marker up. And that's gonna be the end of round five. For round six, now you can work into both loops. You don't have to work only into the front loop or only into the back loop. You can continue just working into both loops like normal. And for round six, we're going to work a single crochet into the first stitch. It's gonna be the first one. Again, we're working into both loops like that. We're gonna do a single crochet into just the first one. Oopsies, let's try that one again. There we go. There's one single crochet in the first and then an increase into the next. So two into the next one. So one in the first, two in the next for an increase. And then repeat that process six times in a row. So one single crochet, one increase, one single crochet, one increase. So let's do our second repeat. Single crochet in the first, increase into the next, into both loops. This is going to be the same as the start of our strawberry, if you might, you might recognize it there. Okay, so... Third repeat, single crochet one, increase one. This will bring you up from 12 stitches to 18. So you should have 18 by the end of round six here. Single crochet one and increase one. Single crochet one, increase one, working into both loops. Last repeat, single crochet and then increase one and two. Okay, get more yarn. Let's pull a stitch marker up like that. And now we are into round seven. For round seven, we're gonna do two single crochets and then an increase repeated six times around. So we're just adding an additional single crochet between increases. Let's go into the next one right here. There's one single crochet, and then in the next stitch, two single crochets, and then an increase. So two in the same stitch, three and four are in the same stitch. Then we'll repeat that process six times total. So two single crochets, one, two, and then an increase, three and four into the same stitch. There's our second repeat, six repeats total, one, two, and then an increase. And this will bring you up from 18 stitches to 24 stitches. Okay, so there's our, let's our Fourth repeat, one, two single crochets, and then three and four are our increase, meaning two single crochets in the same stitch. Two more repeats, one, two, and then an increase, three, and a four. One last increase, two single crochets, one and two, and then two in the same stitch for our last increase at 24 stitches around. There we go. Pull our stitch marker up. And that's going to be the end of round seven. Now for round eight, this is probably going to be maybe the trickiest round that we have here because we're going to do something, uh, we're going to do these little shells, which is going to create these, um, this little like kind of star shape on the top in our leaves right here. So we're going to make all of our leaves now. 
So this part, we're going to learn a new stitch called the double crochet, and we're also going to learn a picot, so, or, or a pico, is, sometimes it's called that. It's spelled P-I-C-O-T, so I think it's French, which means that the T in the end is silent, but that doesn't matter. We're going to be learning those two new stitches, and a lot of these stitches are going to be worked into the same spot. So we're going to do a this one repeat six times in a row, okay? All right. So the first part of the repeat is we want to skip the first stitch. So we don't want to work into that one. We want to work all of our stitches into this next one right here. Okay, so that's going to be our first part. We're going to skip the first stitch, working into the next one. Into that next one, we're going to do two double crochets into the same stitch, then a picot, and then two more double crochets into the same stitch. So first, let's learn what a double crochet is. For a double crochet, we're going to yarn over and go into the stitch. Now again, we're skipping our first stitch, so we want to work into our next one. So not this one, but right here, into that stitch under both loops, yarn over, and pull through the loop. Now you should have three loops on the hook. Next, you want to yarn over and then pull through only two of these loops, one and two. And then finally, to finish up a double crochet, you yarn over and pull through the last two loops on the hook, one and two. And that's going to be a double crochet. We want to work two of those into the same stitch before we do our picot and then two more into the same stitch again. So one more double crochet into the same stitch, yarn over, working into the exact same stitch you just did, right like this, yarn over again and pull that loop through the one on the hook. Now you should have three on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, one and two, yarn over again and pull through the last two, one and two. Okay, so there's two double crochets into the same stitch. Next up, you want to, want to do a picot. For a picot, we're going to chain three. So yarn over and pull through the loop on the hook. So there's one chain, two, and three. Okay, next for a picot, we want to slip stitch into the back loop only of the first chain that you made, skipping these the next two. Okay, so we're going to skip these first two, one, two, and to this last one, we're going to work into the back loop of this chain. That means that when you face the chain towards you right here, see that little bump on the back right there? We want to work a slip stitch into that stitch. For a slip stitch, so there you can see it on the front, and there it is on the back. Well, let's get our crochet hook into that stitch. You don't need to loop yarn over anything. You just go into that stitch. Okay, you might need your nail to help you pry into that back loop. And then you want to yarn over with the end attached to the ball, pull it through that loop, and through it through the loop on the hook. It's kind of like half of a single crochet. You just pull it through all, both of them at the same time. And that's going to be a slip stitch. Uh, and that, together with the chains, is going to be a picot to make these little points at the end. Okay, we're going to do another one of those in just a second. But there's your picot. So you did two double crochets in the same stitch. You did our picot. And now we want to do two more double crochets into the exact same stitch. So we're going to yarn over, go into the same stitch we were working into right here, yarn over again and pull through, yarn over, pull through only two of these loops, one, two, then yarn over and pull through the last two of the loops, one and two. There's our first of our two double crochets. Let's do one more. Yarn over into the same stitch right here, yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through only two of these loops, one, two, then yarn over again and pull through these last two loops, one and two. Okay, in the last part of this repeat, we're going to skip another stitch, so not this next stitch, but the stitch after right here, and we're going to do a slip stitch into that stitch. So we're going to go into that stitch under both loops, yarn over, pull through that loop, and then through the loop on the hook for our slip stitch, just like in the center of our picot. Okay, so there's our first of six repeats done. Let's do another repeat. You don't need a chain or anything like that. You just need to yarn over, skip our first stitch, and do two double crochets into the next one. So skip the first one into this next one, two double crochets. So we yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two of those loops, yarn over again and pull through the two loops again. There's our first double crochet. Let's do another one. Yarn over into the same stitch, Yarn over and pull through, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, one, two, yarn over again and pull through the last two, one, two. Now we want to do a picot, so we chain three, 
yarn over and pull through. One, two, three. Skip the first two chains, working to the back loop only of the third chain from the hook, this little bar on the back. So there's the front, there's the back, right there. Use your nail to help pry that over your crochet hook and then slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on the hook like that. There's our peacock. And then the last part of our, oh wait, no, the next part of our repeat, we do two more double crochets into the same stitch that we did our first two into. So yarn over, into the same stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, one, two, yarn over, and pull through two, one, two. One more double crochet into the same stitch, into the stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, one, two, yarn over, pull through these last two, one, two. Okay, then the last part of this repeat, we skip another stitch and slip stitch into the next one right here. And again, for that slip stitch, we just go into the stitch, yarn over and pull through all the loops. Okay, so there's two of them done. Now we wanna do that repeat four more times. So skip the next stitch. I'm gonna go a little quicker now. Double crochet two into the stitch after the one you skip right here. There's our first double crochet. We pull through two and then pull through two. Now another one into the same stitch. Yarn over into the same stitch, pull through, through two, through two. There's our two double crochets. Now our picot, we chain three. One, two, three. Skip the first two chains into the back loop only of the third chain from the hook right here. Pry it through with your nail and then slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through and pull through. Two more double crochets into the same stitch. You can see me pulling it open a little bit right there. Yarn over into the same stitch and do a double crochet. Yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. There's one double crochet. Yarn over into the same stitch, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Last repeat, or last part of the repeat, skip one more stitch and then slip stitch into this last one right here. Okay, there's three of our leaves done. Three more. I'm just gonna go pretty quick now. Skip our first and double crochet two into the next. Here's one double crochet. Yarn over, two double crochets. Picot, chain three, two, three. Skip two, slip stitch into the back loop of the third one. Two double crochets into the same stitch that you worked into. One double crochet and two. Skip a stitch, slip stitch into the next one. Yarn over, pull through, pull through. There's four done. Yarn over, skip a stitch. Double crochet two. There's one double crochet. Two double crochets. Picot, so I chain three. Skip the two and slip stitch into the third. Back loop only of the third and then two double crochets into the same stitch. One double crochet, and two. Skip a stitch, and then slip stitch one. Okay, there's our fifth. One more repeat here. Skip our first stitch and double crochet two into the next. One, two, Mini, or a regular picot, chain three, one, two, three. Skip the first two and slip stitch into the third, back loop only. Double crochet two into the same stitch. One, two. Skip a stitch and slip stitch one into the, to the next right here, like that, okay. To finish this up, all you need to do is uh, slip stitch into that last one right there, which we just did. Then we can cut the yarn. You want enough of an end here to sew it onto the top. So about like, that's pretty good. Cut it like that. 
and you don't need to slip stitch or uh, chain or anything. You just pull it all the way through like that. And I'm just gonna pull our stitch marker out if I can. There we go. And now we can sew this onto the top of our strawberry, just like that. Okay, so how do you sew this onto the top of the strawberry? It's actually pretty easy. This would this is probably the easiest sewing that uh, you can do in in uh, pattern. So you want to take this tail end that's from the center first and thread that onto our needle. And then go through the very top, the very center of the top of the strawberry and come out somewhere on the back. Like Let's go like right there, just like that. Okay. Then you want to take this other tail end, thread that on our needle. And then we're going to go into the same stitch that you slip stitched that you did our slip stitch into. So go through right here on the body, pull this nice and tight. And now we want to line it up. So just like, I think that's probably fine. Hold it very tightly exactly where you want it and find the stitch that's closest on the top of the strawberry and then come out. See, so I'm in the strawberry itself right now with the needle. And I want to come out wherever, close to where this part of it is. So close to, um, let me grab another little needle here. Close to right there. Close to where that part of the um, angle in between the leaf of the strawberry is. So right there. Okay, so you want to come out wherever on the body it is. So I just usually like to just hold it really f firmly and then just come out feeling like that. See where I'm, see where I came out? I want to come out right, well, you can come out actually through the outside like this, if you want, like that. And then go around this part of the leaf and come back in through this part and go back in through where you came out like that. And then repeat the process. So we hold it very tightly into position, exactly where we want it. Come out through somewhere close to where the other um, uh, corner of the leaf is so about like right, like right there. Is that too far in? Yeah, like right, like right, like that. Oops, that. Okay, let's hold everything into place again. Yeah. See, so that goes around there, and then you pull it nice and tight. And then we'll do it again around this part in through the same stitch. You can go one stitch up if you'd like, it doesn't really matter. And then find that where the next end is coming up. So look right, looks like right there is pretty good. And let's go one more round up, like right there. Yeah, that's pretty good. Make sure you're not going around that part. Make sure it's only around the angle or the corner and pull it nice and tight. around the center, back in through the same stitch. Let's find where the next one's gonna come out, but right like that, looks pretty good. Nice and tight, and then pull it tightly. Boop. Okay, almost done here. Around the next stitch, in through the same stitch, out through the stitch closest to the next corner. Right there's, oops, right there's pretty good. This is why this crimped end is really useful, by the way, of your needle, I mean. Okay, around the corner, and then out through where we started, about like right there, right where that angle is. that. Finally, we're going to go through around the outside of the next one, of the last one, and then come out wherever this tail end is coming out. Like that. Pull it nice and tight. Make sure everything is how you want it to be. You see that these leaves are all free still, but the main part of it is, t is sewn on. And then we're going to take these two tail ends 
and really easily just double knot them together. One and two. Cut it nice and close. Like that. We'll throw this to the side for our next project to stuff with. And then just stuff that knot back in there. Maybe pull that up a little bit. Let's just tweak the top there. And now, oh my gosh, it's so cute. Look at that. Now we have a beautiful giant strawberry. Oh, I love it so much. Drew, if you're watching this right now, thank you so much for working with me. I love this pattern. It's wonderful. If you haven't yet, make sure to go check Drew's uh, other patterns out. I'll put links to all of his stuff down in the description below. Um, and hopefully we're going to be doing more collaborations very soon with Drewby Zoo. Um, but I love it. Oh my God, it's so cute. Isn't that wonderful? All right. Well, thank you so much for watching again. Make sure to like this video down below. Subscribe to the channel. Go check out more of Drewby Zoo's more patterns and more of my patterns. Um, you can find all our patterns at clubcrochet.com. And uh, yeah, make sure to like, subscribe down below. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to check out some other patterns that you could add to this, um, check, all, check out our mini hat patterns. So we have like top hats, um, chef hats, stuff like that. It would be very cute to add to the very top of this, a little top hat or something. That would be so cute. Um, okay, well, thanks again for watching. Pasta la pizza and happy hooking. Bye. 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 Goodbye.